In today's video, I want to talk about the new changes that DJI has made to the Mini series and Remote ID. And it's been causing a lot of confusion. Uh, we were confused, you were confused. And so we decided to make a video that kind of encompasses all the information. Now, in short, what happened is that DJI has disabled Remote ID on the Mini 3 and the Mini 4 Pro when you use these drones with the smaller battery, which is the one that says 249 gram right here. It's also called the standard battery. Now, note that this is for the Mini 4 Pro and the Mini 3. The Mini 3 Pro right here is actually not affected by this. Now, when you fly with the larger battery, this one right here that doesn't have any markings on it, the drone will be broadcasting Remote ID. And no, I don't really think it's a ploy for DJI to sell more batteries. I actually think that uh, DJI is trying to do it right for the majority of the users of these types of drones. And I believe it's a business decision. The Mini is a recreational platform and as such, they're trying to please everyone, including all the recreational flyers that are gonna be flying that drone. Now, if you think about it, they cannot please everyone in this case. It's either they're gonna piss off the recreational pilots because they'll be broadcasting remote ID when they don't have to per regulation, or they're going to annoy the part 107 pilots who are gonna to need to have a module to put on top of their drone in order to comply with remote ID with the smaller battery. Now, in this video, what we're gonna do is look at three possible situations for both recreational pilots and part 107. So you pick the one that applies to you if you own one of these aircraft that is in contention here. And the first situation is gonna be you own the small battery only. The second is gonna be you own the large battery only. And then the last one is you own both of the batteries because in three of these situations, there's gonna be, well, slightly different things that you have to do. So let's say that you own the small battery only, the one that says 249 gram right here. If you're a recreational flyer, you don't need to register the drone. That's actually the easiest possible situation here, which I think is going to apply to the majority of people. Your drone will not broadcast remote ID at all, and it's actually in compliance with the FAA regulation. Now remember, if you put anything on top of that drone, if you put a strobe light, a prop guard, if you put any kind of payload, then you will need to register the drone with the FAA, and then also you will need to have a module in order to be compliant because the drone is not going to broadcast remote ID internally. Now I also have to say that if you actually registered the drone, which, well, you were not really supposed to or not required to. Do the same thing for registration and remote ID that a part 107 operator would do. So part 107 operators, if you have a small battery only, a small battery only, you do need to register the drone because it is required under part 107 operation. Uh, in this case, you need to broadcast remote ID, but guess what? The drone does not do it internally anymore. So you need to get a module to put on top of your drone. And as such, you're gonna be using the module serial number for the remote ID serial number in the FA drone zone. Now, situation number two, you own the large battery, the one that doesn't have any markings right here, and only that battery, okay? That's all you have in your flag bag. If you're a recreational pilot or part 107, the rules are gonna be the same here. You do need to register the drone with the FAA. Now your drone is going to be broadcasting remote ID using standard remote ID inside of the aircraft in compliance with the FAA regulation. Now in this case, you're gonna be using the drone remote ID serial number in the field in the FAA drone zone that says remote ID serial number. It's actually a pretty straightforward situation here and the same for recreational or part 107. Now, when it gets complicated is when you own both of the batteries like we do right here. If you're a recreational pilot and you own both of these batteries, then you have to register the drone with the FAA because, well, you have the larger battery, right? Now, when you're flying with the small battery right here, Unfortunately, because the drone is registered with the FAA, it means that you need to comply with remote ID, which means that you need to get one of these small modules. Even though you're recreational and even though you're flying with a small battery, because the drone has been registered, then in this case, you're gonna to need to get a module, which is expensive, unfortunately. Now, in addition, you'll need to get the registration number on the aircraft displayed uh, that you get from the FAA drone zone. Now, when you're flying with the large battery right here, you'll have to have the drone registered in the inventory uh, on the FAA drone zone, and then also you'll have to have the registration number on the drone. Now, when you fly under part 107, if you own both of these batteries right here, what do you have to do? You actually have to create two registrations, and I know this can get confusing, but for the small battery, the one that says 249 grams right here, you'll have the small battery and the module. That's gonna give you registration number one. That registration number, personally, I would put it 
right here in the back of the battery. That way it's registered with the battery when you put the battery in the drone. You have the registration number on here, that's registration number one. And then when you fly with a large battery, you also need to do a registration for this. No registration number required because the drone is going to broadcast that information natively in here. And then you're gonna put the registration number in here, the second one that you get from the second registration on the large battery. That way it's pretty easy. There is none on the aircraft. It's all on the battery. When you put the large battery in here, you're good. When you put the small battery in here, you're good. You have the right registration number. And I know this is very confusing, right? Small battery, you need a module. Big battery, you don't need a module. This really created a massive, massive mess. Now. With that being said, you might say, is this even legal? What is going on here from a legality standpoint? Well, here's the kicker. There's two things you need to look at. It's 14 CFR 89-101. And what it says in 89-101, it's pretty much the applicability of remote ID. When does someone need to have remote ID? Well, the FAA says, and this is interesting, a uh, person operating an unmanned aircraft that is either registered or required to be registered under part 47 or part 48 needs to comply with remote ID. Now your drone is registered under part 48 in most cases, and because either it is registered because you decided to do so, or it's required to be registered by regulation, then you need to comply with remote ID. And the other bit of regulation you wanna look at is 14 CFR 89501. In this case, this is the exemption that says that DJI is technically allowed to produce a drone that is less than 0.55 pounds and does not require to have remote ID or to meet the requirement of remote ID. This is why they change things because technically this drone, if it only weights 249 grams like it does, then it doesn't have to have remote ID inside of it. Now you might be wondering, what should you do? Should you buy one of these modules and then put it on top? Or should you just maybe sell your smaller batteries and then convert them to a bigger battery? Now that's up to you to decide, but personally, the cheapest module available out there is going to be around $89. And um, the price of one of these batteries right here is about $10 more, okay? The larger battery is about $10 more. So you could be buying one of these so you can fly with a smaller battery, or for the same price, you could be buying a bigger battery. And maybe either you sell this one, if you fly under part 107, you sell the smaller battery, with the proceeds, you buy another longer battery. Um, if you're a recreational pilot, it's really up to you what you're gonna wanna do. Maybe you never wanna buy this bigger one. It's a bit of a conundrum, quite frankly. There's no easy solution. Um, I think DJI kind of created a mess with this, but they were also trying to listen to the community. And so by doing this, they've, well, opened a, another can of worm. So that's it, that's all I have for you. If you have questions, I'm sure you will leave them in here and we'll see you in the next video. Mm -hmm.